So tell me, were you one of the ones that was involved with the AT&T outage this morning? If you were, let me know in the comments. I'm kind of curious of how many actual people were affected, aside from what the news tells us. So for those of you that aren't aware, which I imagine all of you are by now, around 3.30 this morning, something happened with AT&T and a whole bunch of people woke up to phones that didn't work. They were in SS, SOS mode and there was evidently maybe some of the 911 stuff wasn't working right as well. Now, as to what caused that, I'm not gonna discuss that a whole lot here because I'll be honest, for the purpose of this video, none of that matters. What I want to discuss is the lessons learned from that, so to speak. Not really the lessons learned, but more along the lines of the preachings that everybody's been talking about just being proven about the fragility of the system that everything exists inside of, with whether that be internet, power, the roads, phones, all of that stuff exists in the same fragile system that really can see disruptions over the smallest thing. One of the things I heard with this AT&T deal was that there was a guy going in and doing some configuration with one of the, the cloud servers and he screwed something up and boop, all the phones turned off. Just the sheer fact that that could happen with one guy making some wrong keystrokes on a server somewhere turns off tens of thousands of phones. That's probably something we need to be concerned about. However, I don't necessarily think that's what happened. It very well could be, I don't know. And like I said, I, I, I don't really care. What I think probably happened with AT&T and probably the same with the power companies and all of these other systems that we depend on is a lack of maintenance. The biggest threat we have to our power grid is not cyber attacks, physical attacks, same with the roads, all of that stuff, it's rust. Rust, lack of maintenance and just running the dog out of systems that should have been outdated years if not decades ago. And the phone or the AT&T thing, yes it caused some AT&T outages but it also drug a whole bunch of other people down with it, right? Dozens of other companies, I think Google and Meta, I'm not going to name them all because I, I, don't, I don't remember them all. It was just a bunch of them. You can look that up yourself if you want. It drug them down, at least where they saw widespread to minor disruptions in their service as well. I hope y'all can hear me with this wind, by the way. So keep that in mind because the cellular networks and AT&T and the internet, all of those are probably have the most up-to-date components. I didn't say up-to-date system, but they do relatively frequently update that stuff because, you know, the technology changes so fast. But if the power were to go out, you know, you think about the, the phones, well, they'd still work because they've got backup generation. Well, they don't have backup generation when a landslide completely removes the generator. They don't have backup generation whenever they didn't maintain and start the generator or whenever it just wasn't hooked up correctly, it wasn't tested properly. They don't do this stuff with everything else. Testing and, you know, maintenance and all of that, it's a problem with everything. Why would it be any different with another? And phone service is a necessary, essential service. Internet service, necessary and essential. 911 services, necessary and essential. And a lot of that was disrupted. And in the blink of an eye, any of that could have happened to any one of the systems that you could think of. You know, any of the grid, the road grid, the power grid, the internet grid, phone grid, all of that stuff is just kind of teetering at the, at the, just the edge of breakage as it is already. And I think if people were to actually investigate that stuff and see how outdated and how fragile it really is, 
man, it'd wake a lot of people up temporarily because for some reason, whenever stuff like this happens, we talk about it for a few days and we forget about it. That's the reason why I'm making this video today is because by next week, nobody will care about it anymore. I did notice as a side note, there was a uh, company that deals with uh, billing and stuff for uh, pharmaceutical uh, pharmacies. They got hacked today and it caused some major delays with people getting you know prescriptions filled and paid for or something I didn't read all the way into it I just kind of noticed that it was there got it in my radar I'm aware of it and move on it doesn't really affect me personally so I'm gonna move on to working on things that actually do affect me or that I can improve and make no mistake everything is already hacked and it's not all just you know the the russians or the chinese or well a lot of it's already hacked by the you know the 14 year old kid that was bored you know the uh organized crime you know organization right and the ones that we haven't heard about being hacked the ones that haven't made the news it's just because either they didn't tell us about it or they haven't discovered them yet. And I said them because everything is already hacked by more than one organization or person or government or something like that. And it doesn't take much to just turn that stuff off. I'm not trying to, you know, get the tinfoil hat out or anything. If you're one of those people that automatically jumps to conspiracy theories, you need to get over yourself. Not everything is automatically a conspiracy, right? I'm not going to say that it doesn't happen. I probably believe more of that conspiracy stuff. I actually don't normally call them conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theorists, I call them plot spoilers. But not everything that we come in contact with life is some sort of conspiracy or a cyber attack or some nefarious thing. A lot of it's just we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Now it's wore out and broken. So anyway... I just thought I'd kind of bring that up today and just remind everybody just how fragile this whole world that we live in truly is. All right, until next time, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment. Let me know how you are and you guys be safe.